Hello and welcome back once more ladies and gentlemen, yes indeed, my greetings, good day and welcome back to the bloodstained world of let's play Franbo. It is the fourth chapter and we must gather our ingredients, our resources of course, in order to make Edward's flying machine be able to take off and then we can finally go home. That is the plan, is it going to be that simple? Probably not, but the first resource has already been collected, the fireberries from up there and the solution to that puzzle was right rather tricky. Was it really that tricky? I am not sure, but I still feel smart. Don't take that away from me, please. And there you have got them. One down and one more to go. The water. Alright, last time I said that I felt like a genius for the second time in a row because I thought to myself I might have figured out a solution to that problem. Now, let us see if we can do something with that assumption, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, let us see. A moment of silence to take in the atmosphere and thus we have arrived, yes indeed we have the chasm. Alright, I have been playing you ladies and gentlemen, I am not a genius, I have no idea whatsoever. See, my thought last time was maybe here in the real world we could try to knock over this tree. And perhaps then, like that, in the other world, something would happen to the creature with the shiny glowing hair. Perhaps we'd be able to use it as a rope to climb down, but then I realized I've got nothing at my disposal to destroy said tree. As it turns out, unfortunately, this butter knife can't be used for everything. It is quite a handy multi-tool, but this tree, unfortunately, it has to surrender. Nope, it just won't do. As a weapon of mass destruction, it won't do. Where did I find this knife anyway? I can't even remember. Was it the nicely, 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 the nicely, 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 whatever is that supposed to mean? I think I wanted to say was it the house of conjoined horror, but then the word nice snuck up on me and I decided to work with it. Yes, indeed, the master of improvisation right here. It was the house, wasn't it? And that is still my blood, yeah, from conducting that ritual, it required human blood, my blood, if I remember things correctly. Well, it has helped me out so far, I am certain it will help me out again, but not right now. So what is a man, or rather a young girl, meant to do? Inspect the tree, perhaps? I wonder how long it took for this tree to grow. And here I am, and I wanted to cut it down, yes indeed, in a matter of seconds, but alas, no such luck. Well, of course I have tried, yes indeed I have, off screen, which was admittedly a bad idea, because whatever you do in this game gets saved, and thus I wouldn't have been able to show you the tree falling over anymore, but thankfully it didn't happen. It is kind of bad for me, but good for you, you didn't miss out on anything. Ah, but of course that doesn't change the fact that I am stuck. Mr. Midnight, any ideas? Would you like to become more than an extra once more, please? I have to get the fireberries and a bucket full of water before going home, kitty. Nothing at all. You choose to be an extra. Alright, I suppose you've earned yourself a little bit of rest. That is fine, but please don't let me hanging now, Mr. Midnight. Don't. Oh dear, perhaps I should go back to Edward and ask him a question or two, give him the fireberries and maybe then the plot is gonna to, gonna to. I am just so clever with my wording today, it is amazing. First the nicely nicely, now I have already forgotten what I just said. 
It didn't happen. Yeah, let's agree on that. It didn't happen. I am a master of my craft. I don't do mistakes. And whenever I do perform in a slightly silly manner, I try to work with it. Yes, indeed, over the course of time, I have tried to learn to live with my errors. Instead of just scrapping the episode altogether, it was a nasty, nasty habit. But thankfully, I have grown away from that a little, ever so slightly. Alright, my tall friend. Not intimidating at all. Yes, you keep knocking at that box, the fuse box or whatever. I don't know what that is for the adults, but you keep knocking at it. Certainly that's gonna improve how it works. Yeah, smash that. What is that? Smash that wrench? That isn't a wrench, right? Is it a wrench? It is some sort of tool, but I can't recall the name. The accurate, appropriate, proper name. Oh, let's just call it a wrench for now. Let's call it a wrench here. Why don't you pay attention to something else for a change? My friend Edward, I have brought the berries. Let us use them, shall we? Sir, I brought the fire berries, um, but they are not on fire anymore. Is that bad? Ah, magnificent. They will do just fine. Thank you very much, my darling. I can't say I am feeling comfortable about the fact that he is calling me darling. Maybe that is just bringing back some bad memories. I wonder what I could be talking about. Really? Ah. <gasps> huh, I really don't know. Anyway, moving on from that. Nothing else, eh? Absolutely nothing. <sighs> I've got the bucket and I am on my own. That is most unpleasant. No one is helping. Edward, you aren't helping. Mr. Midnight, you aren't helping. You're too busy grooming yourself. I can't believe it. Alright, fine. I solved the other riddle. I can solve this one too. Watch me go. I don't need any help whatsoever. Before you know it, I'll be home. Now, back to the chasm of wonders. The chasm of what am I meant to do here? Well, obviously I can't do anything here in the normal world. So let's travel back for a second or two. Brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, for the horrors. Yuck, that transition. It certainly has lost a little bit of its charm, but it is still quite, quite frightening. When all of a sudden, a thing like this appears in front of you without warning. All right now, ma'am, uh, I think we have established that you do not wish to help me in any way. The hair, I tried cutting it down, didn't work. I even tried stabbing her, didn't work either. The knife, it fails and fails and fails. Hmm, what else could you do? There is the hair. Hmm. How mysterious, how mysterious. Going back one screen. So here we have got the carcass that contains the needle worm. I looked that up by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I looked it up because I wanted to know, am I missing something with that name? But apparently, no, there is nothing. When you enter Diddleworm into Google, there is nothing. You might stumble upon Fran Bo, but not a deeper meaning. So I don't know if there is like a worm in the real world with a similar name, and this is just supposed to be like a pun or whatever. I don't get it, but the fellow was still cute. Can you believe that I just accepted the fact that he was there? It is the world of Fran Bo, after all, why should I question it? There is a grim reaper worm inside that carcass, sure, why not? Makes as much sense as the tall fella with the top hat calling himself Edward, my imaginary friend. 
Alright. Alright, alright, alright. I can't reach that. I can't interact with this. Can't interact with the web of hair that only leaves one screen. But didn't I try interacting with this as well? Uh, don't mind them. They are just having fun. Just having a fun old time. <laughs> oh my, you you can't get enough of my intestines, can you? Alright, you better be careful. I wonder, should I be able to obtain the water anytime soon? Can I use it on them? The Kamalas. What would happen? Would it turn them into the locus? Well, I guess I'll never find out, because I can't get the water. Hmm. Use the bloody knife with the hair. Ah, it doesn't work. Oh, going back, going back. Ah, I might have... I might have another idea. Alright, first, all the way back to the creature. Here we are. So, let's say we didn't want to use violence. Maybe, since it has got a handle, maybe I can attach the bucket to the hair? Hmm, use Edward's bucket with hair. Let's try that. I hope it won't mind. I need help, please. Would you allow me to tie this bucket to your beautiful hair? It's like an accessory. Tie your bucket to our hair? Oh, why, dearie? That sounds insane. No, oh, it's not insane at all. I need water from under the cliff, but I can't reach it. Please, pretty please. I need to use your beautiful long hair as a rope. Please help me. Oh, oh all right. We'll help you. Tie the bucket real tight. Oh, thank you. You're very nice. Fill up the whole bucket, please. Oh dear. That is the solution. Yeah, it worked. I am impressed. Am I a genius, though, for figuring that out? Nope, I don't think so, but wait a second. Hmm. Trying to cut off the hair didn't work. Trying to stab her didn't work. Yeah. Why the hell were those my first two assumptions instead of, you know, a non-violent solution? Yeah, it is certainly interesting what this game does with you. I mean, we have committed murder before, like twice. So the game has kind of conditioned me to try out violent things first. Yeah, but no, that wasn't the way to do it. Maybe I should try to find my way back to normality. But now, the water. The bucket is now full of water. Oh, thank you, shiny insects. I have to go now. I have to go home. Home is somewhere. We all wish to belong. But does home belong somewhere? Now, why the hell are you giving me this all of the sudden? But does home belong somewhere? I suppose home belongs where it belongs? Should we try to make sense of this statement? Yeah, I wish to belong home. But does home belong somewhere? I suppose a home isn't really alive and sentient? I mean, does it even care about belonging somewhere? Or are you trying to say even a home is sentient, has a heart, has a brain, maybe the home wants to be somewhere? Am I being selfish? Ugh, I am just gonna go with A. I don't understand. What? I am sorry, I... I didn't really understand the question. It was a rhetorical question, dearie. <laughs> I just wanted to say that you are your own home. I am my own home. So are you saying I shouldn't want to go back to Aunt Grace because my home is already here? I am my home? Or is there something way deeper to that? Hmm. Well, 
You asked me a rhetorical question and I gave you a um a rhetorical answer. <laughs> no, I did not I I, I did not I, I don't know. Welcome yourself inside, dearie. You will find many doors to open. Mm, yes. Mm. <laughs> Welcome yourself inside. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Oh, that sounds mysterious and beautiful. Uh, I'll try to do that some other time. <laughs> Bye, you freaking weirdo. Just give me the water. Oh, the bucket is full of water. It doesn't weigh anything. Well, that's interesting. Suppose that would be that glorious it would technology. Thanks for that and uh, goodbye. Alright, I think I received more than I bargained for. Not just the water, but also more riddles and puzzles and weird, confusing words. Make sense of the words. Welcome yourself in. You are your own home. Full of doors. I suppose one could interpret it in this way. Perhaps I am my own home because... Because I am trapped within my own mind? Perhaps the Fran of the real world is insane. Perhaps in a coma and thus trapped in her own mind? Yeah, and thus she has become her own home. She is already home because she never left home. But inside of her mind, if she would just welcome this, this state of existence, perhaps then all the doors would open up to her because her mind is infinite. Am I reading too deeply into this? Ah, I think I am probably so wrong, but hey. It is still kind of fun and entertaining to talk about it, isn't it? Am I the only one? Nah. Alright. I think you have feasted long enough on my bloody, literally bloody carcass. How about a little beverage? You know, to flush down the meat. Ugh. Would you like some water? Use the bucket with Kamala. This won't work, huh? Oh, I see, I see, I see. These are special Kamalas. Can't use it on them, only on those aboard Edward's flying machine. Whatever sense that makes. Alright, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. You'll be feasting here for all eternity. I don't need to be around anymore. And there we go. Mr. Edward, look what I have brought. And even the can, the watering can, the bucket, as you refer to it, is still in one piece. Sir Edward, here's the bucket full of water. I got help from the shiny insects. I mean, they looked like a face. I didn't even see insects, but um, here you go. Ah, you mean the luciferns. They're nice, yes. But only when you see them in this reality. Now what is that supposed to mean? What would they look like in the other world? Or is he talking about just this realm in particular? That's what they were called, of course, the Luciferns. Hmm. You are quite knowledgeable, aren't you, Edward? They're very dangerous if you ever see them in the fifth reality. They can burn you. Oh my. I suppose it is a good thing this isn't the fifth reality then. <laughs> we aren't going there, are we? Wow, burn me? Well, I haven't been into the fifth reality yet. Don't give him ideas, friend. We don't need to go there. Ah, I don't recommend it. What's reasonable there? Maybe the worst you'll ever experience. Yeah, let's not go there. It has been decided. Oh, I forgot to thank you for the water. Thank you, Fran. Ah, uh, you're welcome, Edward, you're welcome. Who knows, maybe we can become friends after all. Ah, Fran. Oh no, it is 2.34. The journey will begin. 
Let's go inside the machine. Here, I think he mentioned that, didn't he? That around this time we'd be leaving? Something like that. Ah, it's been too long. Yeah, how long exactly? It has been six months. Maybe I should have watched that episode again to prepare myself, but come on now. How important could the time be? Let's go inside the machine and see what wonders await, young friend. And don't leave Mr. Midnight behind, please. Yeah, I totally believe you just walked through that door like that, standing upright. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been fun to see him bend down and squeeze through? Alright, Mr. Midnight, I know you would prefer to sleep. And this forest has been kind of calm and nice if you ignore the other world. But we need to go home. This is the fourth chapter. There are only five chapters in this game. We are so close, I can taste it. Oh my, it'll be a sad day when this journey comes to an end. Ah, but won't it have been such a wonderful journey too? Alright, all aboard the flying machine of Edward, ladies and gentlemen, all aboard Edward's flying machine. Oh my. Captain, we have got liftoff. Ah, it's 2.36. We have a great possibility of reaching the target in good condition. Alright, I assume that sounds good. Ah, and everything is so nice and silent in here. Except, you know, a couple of gadgets causing a slight ruckus. Also, is that like half of a bike behind him? Don't tell me that is how he is going to fly this thing. Oh my god. Look at Mr. Midnight. Look at him in comparison to Edward. He is so tiny. I don't know, that's just really, really adorable for some reason to me. It is adorable. Ugh, and there is an old-fashioned music player. What do you call these? A gramophone? A... Oh my god. An old-fashioned phone too? Like, what is this? Flying machine? Here we've got a book. I'm gonna be taking a look at that for sure. A shoe? A... a wooden foot? What is that? A hammer? Some tape? I just like how everything is so chaotic in here. You've got like the futuristic um, looking controls and everything. But then also like a teddy bear hanging there, a car, a cup of tea or coffee. Oh my, this truly is a machine of wonders. We'll soon be on our way to the third reality. Are you excited, Fran? So, the third reality is Earth, correct? My reality? If I am remembering things correctly? Understand more? I don't know what this would mean. Where is it? Yeah, let's, let's ask that. Where is it? Oh, it sounds exciting. Palantras, the royal physician, told me about different realities, but where are they? Oh, you'll understand soon. The answers are not easy to recognize. I can imagine that. Oh yeah, it sure sounds strange. But why not now? I think it might be a decent idea to push him a little toward honesty. Um, soon. But why not now? Time goes as it has to in order for you to be alive. Time goes as it has to in order for you to be alive. I do not understand. What the hell are you trying to say, Edward? No. <laughs> if it all happened now, you'd probably explode. That sounds like, you know, filling my brain with eldritch knowledge about the universe and all the realms and I wouldn't be able to take it. I guess I can see that, but I am still feeling confused. Look at him. <laughs> oh my god, look at him. 
Oh, there's the other, there's the other wheel. I think. Uh, it's smaller than this one, though. Could be the other wheel of the bike. Oh my god. <laughs> I am sure somebody had fun animating this particular moment. <laughs> are you telling me that the answers I'm looking for will come to me when they want? Mm, that might be very well what he is trying to say. Mm, mm, not exactly. You know what, Fran? I'd rather say. Through time, you have to explore and experience to understand. Ugh, another very deep sentence. As time progresses, the answers will come to me eventually. I just have to be patient, have to explore, have to experience, and then, yes indeed, then I'll finally be that genius I want to be. This means the answers will come when you find them. Oh yeah, or to put it bluntly, that. <laughs> I just have to wait. He isn't gonna give it away, like for free, all at once. That would be too easy. No, I mean, uh, not, <coughs> not when others tell you how or where to find them. Of course it would. Say whatever you want, play your games. Ah, I see, well, I'm excited now. You woke up my curiosiness. Curiosiness? How did I just say that word? Curiousness? Curiosiness? It's a made up word. She made it up. It's not my fault. But being curious isn't always a good trait to have, Fran. Just like the Luciferns, you shouldn't always be curious. You know who else can be curious? Little children getting lured into the back of a van. Just saying. Not implying that he would do such a thing, but we don't know. Hmm. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. Be curious, and you'll always be amazed. Yes. Hmm. That's debatable. But now, Fran, we have to get things done. Talking won't get you home. Or take you home, rather. Oh, what thing, sir? Um, are you talking about the Kamalas aboard? Ah, the machine needs some maintenance, and I think you would do incredible work. I mean, you have proven that you can handle puzzles. <laughs> Here are the fireberries and the water you gathered before. There we are. You'll need them to get the water pump working again and the fuel mixed. You'll find all information you need when you enter the room to the left. But feel free to enter any room you wish. I'll be quite busy fixing the automatic driver. The automatic driver? Hmm. But if you have something to ask, I'll be here. Oh, um, I've never done this sort of thing before. Uh, see you soon? Yeah, I want to be confident and just say see you soon, but maybe we can uh, get a little bit more out of him, a little bit more optional dialogue. Um, but uh, I've never done anything like this before. That makes it more exciting. Have fun, my darling. Oh, there's that word again, darling. Where have I heard that before? Another distant memory. Hmm. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god. Oh. I want you! No, you don't! Help my baby! What the fuck? No, I can't. I can't put my finger on it. Alright, I'll go now. And so it begins. Ladies and gentlemen, yes indeed, the miraculous journey through time and space. Edward's flying machine, I hope you'll enjoy your flight, and please don't die on the way home. <laughs> oh dear. And we can still use the duotine in here. So that means, yes indeed, we'll have plenty of stuff to explore and look at. Oh boy. Well, the episode isn't quite over yet. Say, should we examine the cockpit? Of course. But first, mit the stubbrtbrtbrtke. That would be the first. No, the second. No, what am I doing? The third screw up of this video. Mich stubbrtbrtbrtke. 
Ah, oh, Mr. Midnight, that is your name. Do you want to continue just being an extra, or do you have anything useful to say for a change? The flying machine is incredible. It can fly. Meow. <laughs> he is so innocent. He... I... I just... I just don't know. It's like he is resting. He is so totally chill at the moment. Ugh, let him have that moment. Alright, what is there to observe? What about the phone? Hello, Fran speaking. Come in. No one? Uh, fine, be that way. Huh, nobody answers me. It's almost like there is no one else aboard this vessel. Hmm, anyways, I can always talk to myself. <laughs> oh dear. Oh my god. What she just said there. I can always talk to myself. <laughs> Oh, that is hitting too close to home. What have I been doing for over two years with this Let's Play? Ah, friend, don't do that. Could we enjoy some good old-fashioned music? Ah, oh, this music makes me think of forks. Oh, we can. Well, this doesn't happen to be copyrighted, correct? <laughs> oh, it is kind of... Kind of nice to listen to. I'll be I'll be quiet for a second. Oh. It was starting to get real majestic there for you know, a brief moment. But then it stopped. Unfortunate. But I think it suited the atmosphere quite well. Just riding the clouds toward destiny. So let's see, what about these? Can I take any of these? A hammer, obviously, to hammer stuff. I am also a genius. What's with that evil expression upon your face, friend? A hammer, yes, used to hammer things. <laughs> Gonna bonk it what over the head. Even though I don't think that would do anything to him. Well, not uh, if you wanted to use the hammer for something else, like uh, bumping him over the head. But for what? Mm, nah, I'll just leave it here. Oh, Fran. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'll keep this. Duct tape is always good to fix stuff. Yes, indeed. A true classic of point-and-click adventure games. Or, you know, most games in general. The duct tape. What are we gonna be able to use that for? Time will reveal the answers. Yes, indeed. They'll come to us. I haven't forgotten. A wooden foot? Ha, ah, it reminds me of when I was a tree. Oh, friend, we don't wish to remember that. Oh, no. Oh, no, the memories are coming back. <coughs> No, I don't want to be a tree anymore. <coughs> no, 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 no. I'll be a girl. I'll stay a girl. That's much better. Hm. I guess it's used as a model for making shoes. Isn't he wearing such fancy shoes? That it would. Hm. It wore shoes are very pretty. Even she agrees. Now what about that book? Ah, yes. How to make a shoe? No. Now, wait a second. Alright. Shoe and a foot. Um, a glimpse into what's inside of a foot. You turn the shoe around. You pull off the skin from the bottom of the foot, revealing the muscle. What? And then you graft it onto the shoe, the skin. What the... Ah, uh, this is um, questionable reading material you've got there, Edward. Uh, Fran, anything to say? Feet, one foot with a shoe, one foot without a shoe. Um, keep reading. It's the Thursda language again. I wonder what it says. Oh yeah. The Thursda language. Why the hell does he own a book with the Thursda language? 
I assume he has been there before. Could I actually translate this if I bothered? If I bothered to, you know, look at the alphabet? Ah, that would take forever. I could do it off screen, perhaps. Is that foot. Uh, is that foot flesh on the shoe's sole? Mm. Yes, it is, friend. Yes, it is. If this is supposed to be a clue for something, yeah. It's awkward. It really is awkward. But I might try to translate some of this. Just for you, ladies and gentlemen. Just for you. Uh, um, let's, let's not talk about the book, Edward. Let's not. Oh, this looks very complicated. Shouldn't be messing with it. Hmm. I'm not interested of knowing what it is. Maybe some other time. But friend, time will reveal the answers. And there is no time like the present. Can I have some tea? I think it would have style. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a lovely comment. I think he has style. What with the teddy bear, and the car, and the music. Hmm, it is kind of true. He is a classy fella, that it would. He likes things that I also like. Maybe that is why he is my imaginary friend? All these details make me wonder. It is a machine of wonders, friend. It sure is. Oh, this right here, this apparatus. Oh, this is odd. I also have a red bicycle. Alright, getting a little, just ever so slightly creepy again. So this guy owns everything you own as well, friend. The same taste, the same bike. He is your imaginary friend. So yeah, that is probably why. But, you know, if he was just an imaginary friend, that's one thing. But then what about the realities? The Velokas, the Kamolas, the Demon, Reamer, the Mother of Evil, Mabuka, what about the Talking Cat? What about everything? Yeah, is he just a part of my insanity and come to life? It's as if he is the only light in all of this madness at the moment. But I can't yet trust that light. It is sort of a dim light. Uh, I wonder what this machine does. Uh, it does for sure many things or nothing at all. Uh, things move and rotate. That's all I see. Including this compass right here. Just spinning um, all over the place. Oh, I know what this is. It's a compass. Mm, but this one seems to be confused. Uh, as confused as I am. It shows north and south at the same time. Mm hmm. Certainly mysterious. So he said take the door on the left. I guess I am done in here for now. Uh, he is taking care of our flight path. Alright, I believe in you, Edward. Uh, don't let us down. <laughs> oh, that was such an... Uh, such, such an... What am I trying to say here? Is this the fourth screw-up? <laughs> don't let us down. Yeah, such an... Let me try and finish this sentence, otherwise I won't be satisfied with myself. That was such an unintentional pun. That is all I tried to say. Yeah, such an unintentional... Uninter <sighs> moving on. Just moving on. When I try to be funny, it just doesn't work. Nope, I am meant to talk. I am meant to be informative, to speculate, to marvel at the mysteries of this world, not to crack jokes. <laughs> oh my, I guess it is all downhill from here. <laughs> alright, alright, uh, we need a change of scenery, because this episode is almost over. What about the duotine? Either that, and to ruin the serenity of this moment, or check out what's uh, next door. I think I am just gonna check out the door, yeah, and keep you all excited for the next episode, because you all of course want to see what's the duotine gonna do. But first, let's see. My my, quite fancy indeed. Ah, 
help. Yeah, my first, my first thought is help. My second thought would be, I remember that thing. That cat on a wheel, on a lone wheel. That is the very cat, uh, robot, machine thing that I saw in the asylum. I saw it when it would first appeared, I believe, in one room. And then I think, yeah, I also saw it coming out of the asylum when Reamer uh, attacked Fran, trying to prevent her from leaving. That uh, robot cat, that mechanical cat, came out of the front door and scared him away. And then it just kind of disappeared into the hedge maze. So I, I assume this is meant to imply, yep, it was it would all along. And he uh, set up and activated that cat to save me. And that would be the reason why he, Mr. Midnight, can't remember a thing. I believe at uh, some point, Fran said, didn't you save me, Mr. Midnight? But then he replied, nah, I didn't do such a thing. Not at the asylum anyway. So there's that. It was probably it was all along. Um, of course, <clears throat> sorry about that. It creates another question. Why would Itward own a mechanical cat that looks kind of similar to Mr. Midnight? I, uh, I don't know. It is still kind of ambiguous, isn't it? What is Itward all about? And Jesus, this is going to be a large vessel. Am I correct? It even has a ladder we can go over there. And then there is the duotine. I think we'll never be done with this place. Uh, one more room. Hmm. Oh, the door is closed. Maybe Edward can open it later. Alright. At least that means the area isn't that big for now. Hmm. Well. <clears throat> Sorry about that, my throat is dying. A sign that I should probably stop recording. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, isn't this such fun? Thank you all for watching this new episode of Let's Play Fran Bow. And when we'll return with it, uh, more of Edward's flying machine, naturally. Many rooms that need exploring, as well as the other world. And perhaps sometime down the road, down again, <laughs> nah, I'll stop at that. Perhaps sometime down the road we'll actually make it home to the third reality and back to Aunt Grace. And maybe then all is going to be revealed. Yeah, either that or nothing is gonna be revealed at all and I'll be stuck in this nightmare forever and ever and ever. But as long as we're enjoying ourselves, I hope that you are enjoying yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, until then, my name has been The Shadow Cookie, and as always, have a great day. Gonna see you all soon, till then, until then.